there you have it my friend the hay is in the barn so to speak 10 days out from the Terraware 100 miler all of the long runs are done all of the hard work is done it is taper time nothing to do but maintenance now Michelle and I will make the 20 plus hour trek to New Zealand this coming Friday uh, race day is February the 8th, so we will have just under a week in New Zealand to get acclimatized, try and get over some of that jet lag and get as much rest as possible coming up. If you remember last week, I bought a couple of new pairs of shoes for the race, but they ended up uh, being not so good. Saucony went and raised the heel on the Peregrine 10s, and I'd been running on the Peregrine 8s and the Peregrine ISOs. I was in a bit of a panic trying to find new shoes because my old ones are pretty much completely destroyed. As luck would have it, I found one pair in the city and I was able to order another pair from Sportcheck online, which got here on Monday. So I should be set and good to go as far as shoes go. I've got two brand new pairs. I've got one older pair that's not completely destroyed. Uh, so three pairs of shoes should get me by. This week, we're gonna sit down with my coach, Dave Proctor, and talk a little bit about my goal time based on my current fitness level. We're gonna talk a little bit about pacing, we're gonna talk a little bit about fueling, nutrition, hydration for the race, and some of the other things that we need to consider. And if you don't know who Dave Proctor is, I would highly encourage you to check him out. Not only is Dave Proctor a wonderful human being, but he is also an incredible athlete, he has several course records, he has a couple of Canadian records, and at least one Guinness World Record, and he's going to be working on another Guinness World Record uh, come May of 2020. So if you don't know who Dave is, check him out. He's doing it all for the Rare Disease Foundation in honor of his son. So check out Dave at outrunrare.com. You will not be disappointed. This week, I also want to talk a little bit about what it takes to run 100 miles. And we're going to play a little game that I like to call reason or excuse. One of the things that I love about running is many of the lessons that I learn through running are equally applicable in everyday life. Stick around with me because Dave has an algorithm whereby he plugs in my recent long runs into the computer and based on the elevation profile of the course, it spits out a predicted finishing time for me uh, for the TerraWare 100. All right, so before we get to my conversation with Dave and set my time goal for the TerraWare 100, let's talk a little bit about what it takes to go from not being a runner to being able to run 100 miles. Like many things in life, it's actually relatively simple. Now that's not to say that it's easy, uh, but it is fairly simple. The only thing between not being a runner and being able to run 100 miles is a shit ton of training runs. There's really a combination of two factors at play here. The first is time, and the second is effort. And it's important to understand, and I think if you talk to any runners, they will explain to you that this process isn't necessarily linear, it's not a straight line, that there are an awful lot of twists and turns and setbacks that will hit you up along the way. The only thing between not being a runner and being able to run 100 miles is the excuses that we use not to make those training runs. Last week on the track, my friend Jen and I actually had a really interesting conversation uh, we talked a lot about the difference between reasons and excuses. And if you paid attention or lived in Northern Alberta the last couple of weeks, you know that it has been ridiculously cold, like minus 40 kind of cold. So getting out for a run in minus 40 gets to be a little bit challenging. And when we look at extreme cold like minus 40, all of a sudden that can start to sound like a valid reason not to get your training runs in. However, when we start to look at the plethora and myriad of indoor track options available to us, um, all of a sudden minus 40 starts to sound more like an excuse. Recognizing the difference between a reason and an excuse is an incredibly powerful thing. When I'm at my best, I'm asking myself, 
why am I not getting this done? Is this a reason or is it an excuse? You know, it was interesting. After I started to put together the concept for this video, I went and watched one of my favorite YouTubers, a fellow by the name of Casey Neistat. And if you're watching YouTube, you probably know who Casey Neistat is. He is an incredible filmmaker who has done a daily vlog. And Casey had already done something on excuses. And when I happened to come across that video this week as I was putting together the concept for this video, I started to think that, ah, I can't really do another video on excuses. Casey's already done this one and he's done it reasonably well. Then I applied this test uh, to that scenario. So Casey having done a video in a similar realm, I was looking at that as a reason for me not to make this video, not to continue with this concept. But the reality is that wasn't a reason, it was merely an excuse. And if I let that stand in my way, this video would never see the light of day. I'd never get to practice some of this creativity. Whether it's good or not, I'll leave that up to you to decide. So let's hop over and see what Dave has to say and I will share with you uh, what my goal for the TerraWare 100 is. 4 a.m. start, you know, boo. Um, so waking up uh, an hour and 30 minutes before the race, you know, breakfast, the plan looked like, but I think it was 9,000 calories over the 30 hours. Yes. So um, it's, it's a very runnable course, uh, as seen in, in the, you know, the, the, the course record is 16, 18. I was looking at the math, there's one significant downhill, and, and I, I would say with that, you know, just work on your downhill form where you try not to break, where you're just letting your body go. And then, of course, the mandatory gear. Have you, have you read up on the mandatory gear? Yeah, it's a lot, hey? How do you feel about carrying all this stuff or not carrying this stuff? But, yeah, I mean, dude, um, you're, you're talking to a guy that brings three cameras on his 100 miler, so. Right, 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 right. <laughs> exactly. Hey, you know what? If you come in at 30 hours, um, yeah, you, I, I believe that you know, at 30 hours you performed as well as you are at with, with your, with your, because yeah, if I had to sit down and sort of pick a goal, I think that would be kind of where I would look based on the elevation profile. It looks a little easier than Sin. I know I need to come in 30 hours at Sin, so that would absolutely be a target I would be shooting for. So, so I like this a lot. Leaving with a lot of fuel, you know, being prepared for it. Uh, so I, I think it's, it's, it's just a really great graph for you and Michelle to go over. Yeah, and, and I, I made up that 500 milliliters per hour. I don't know what your sweat and your sweat rate is, um, but that's pretty, pretty normal, pretty basic. Okay. Um, and that's of course with the use of of, of noon or or scratch. So you're making sure that you're getting enough sodium and magnesium and potassium and, and things in. You know, I like to break it up in between thirds. So first third, middle third, and final third. Yeah, the first third should be pretty easy and scenic and nice. And, so basically, the temperature it heats up and later in the day, uh, dial back the pace as needed. You know, eating constantly, you know, power hike, and try to keep that heart rate low. Final third is, you know what? Drop the hammer. Um, you know, start looking at the time and, and that pace chart, and if you are getting close to that Western States qualifying time, um, then, then, then it's yours. Finish what you started in that final third. There you have it, my friend. Two days from now, Michelle and I will be on a plane on our way to New Zealand. So as always, if you enjoyed this video and you wanna see what happens next, click that subscribe button, hit that bell so you get notified when I upload new videos. And when I see you next Wednesday, I will be in New Zealand. I will make sure I leave that pace chart at the end after the Strava data. So if you wanna take a deeper look at that, you're welcome to do that. And as always, my friend, continue to make the beautiful shit happen and have yourself a fantastic day.